This is a follow-up video for the mixed media art and artist swap and hop that I was a part of in June. My swap partner was Yolan from YouTube channel Devin Rex for Art. We had mailed each other three items to create with. As you can see here, she sent me some vintage papers and a beautiful doily. The bonus piece and what totally inspired the look of this art journal spread is a gel print she created on one of my favorite videos of hers. I will link that video below in the description. A quick way to start a background is to glue down some papers with some designs or patterns on them, or in this case, some vintage writing. This vintage paper perfectly fit the creative theme of this hop, which was old is new. If you haven't had a chance to watch my last video, I highly recommend doing so because it has all the video links to the other channels that participated. Everyone's creative version of the theme using the items sent to them was very fun to watch. I will also link that video below in the description. If you want to check out even more about this creative hop, you should join the Facebook group Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artist, hosted by PM Artist Studio. I am prepping the pages with clear gesso because I'm going to be using sprays and a lot of water. This step will seal the pages and lock in that beautiful vintage writing, preventing the ink from bleeding. My last few videos have all had some type of resist technique. This time I'm using a texture paste that is translucent and glossy. Texture paste can be tinted any color. A translucent one works the best because the color you add will stay true. Opaque pastes have white in them so they will produce a lighter color. The gloss finish will resist anything I spray on top due to the slick surface it creates when it dries. This is a stencil from PM Artist Studio. As mentioned earlier, they are the hosts of the creative hop and swap in their Facebook group, makers of mixed media art and artists. They have a great selection of stencils. I chose to mix up two different colors and randomly apply the colored paste through the stencil. I am applying it thinly through the stencil, scraping up any excess. I wanted to see if some of the background writing would show through. A translucent or transparent ink would have worked better added to the paste. I would say oxide sprays are semi-opaque to opaque, depending on the amount of the application. I am adding some oxide spray to give the background a bit more of the vintage look. So the perfect color for this is old paper. Now this is where you will see the resist effect. At first it doesn't look like much is happening and that's because the ink is currently sitting on top of the glossy texture paste. Once I am happy with where the ink is applied on the page, I just first take a dry paper kitchen towel and remove any of the excess ink while drying. Then once the ink that's left on the pages is dry, I use a damp paper kitchen towel to softly wipe away the ink still sitting on top of the glossy texture paste. Here I am repeating the same thing on the other side. I think it would be really fun to play with different colors. You could easily get creative with different color combos.
This is another stencil from PM Artist Studio. I really like this type of script style stencil masks. I decided to try stamping with it. If you have never tried stamping with a stencil, I recommend trying it out. You won't really get a perfect stamped image. It will be more of an imperfect or distressed version of it. It will also be the stencil design itself, not the empty spaces where you would normally apply the color through. Can you see now how the gel print from Yolande is really inspiring what's going on on the journal pages? I am focusing on staying within the color palette and even some of the textures. Okay, so now that I have the background finished, time to start on the other swap items. I wanted to incorporate some pieces that resembled metal. These embossing enamels are great to achieve that look especially used on gear die cuts. The embossing enamels are custom blends of a wide variety of the granule sizes and premium glitters and mica. I really had circles in mind and had already had some cut out. I could have just traced the circles onto the vintage paper, but because it was fairly thin I wanted to reinforce them by just gluing it together then cutting them out. This circle size was conveniently the right size to use together with the large faux metal gear. I thought it could look kind of cool used as a frame. You can sometimes find some good embellishments at the dollar store. I had found this pack of moths and dragonflies and another pack with butterflies. They have some gold foiling details on them and are so pretty. So still sticking with the circle and moth theme, I found some Tim Holtz Ideology tissue paper. I thought the black and white would add some contrast to the pages, so I glued it to another pre-cut circle. If I applied it directly to the page, the background would show through since it's a thin tissue paper. I am also using some archival ink in ground espresso to ink the edges. This will make them pop a bit from the pages by adding some shadowing around them. I have some smaller circles, so I'm trying to get as many as I can from this little vintage paper. I don't have any other gear die cuts that I can use as frames for them, but I think one main one is good and will be used as the main focal point anyway. The doily was the most challenging swap item for me. I really had no idea how to incorporate it into the journal page at first, that's so great about being a part of a creative group and joining these monthly themes. They can really help you to go out of your comfort zone or just give you the opportunity to try something new that you may not have thought of before. So the idea I came up with for how to use a doily is to cut out some of the flower and leaf shapes, then color them. Now that all the pieces are complete, time to assemble and glue everything in place. When figuring out the composition of the pieces, try leaving a couple to hang over the edges of the pages that will be cut off, rather than sticking them all within the pages. If there is a lot of an image that hangs over, you can sometimes reuse that cut off piece somewhere on the page, 
so don't throw it out right away or save it for another time. This is where my five-year-old son enters a video. You can see his arm on the bottom right of the screen and he helps a bit with etching the journal pages with ink. Last, but not least, adding a couple sentiments with Tim Old's ideology stickers. I will have my swap partners video linked at the end of this one so you can see what she created with the three items I sent her. And if you want to see all the other hot participants, please check out my last video as they are all linked there. Thank you so much for watching.